Hello everyone, welcome you all to Eternal IAS. I am your faculty Ayushi Madan and in today's lecture we are again going to cover the five important MCQ related to prelims exam. As you all know the exam prelims exam is round ar around the corner and now we have to understand and do the important topics which are relevant for the upcoming exam. Right, everyone? So, let us now start. Let's see the five articles. The first article in today's series will be Cantor's Giant Soft-Shell Turtle. Then the GI tag because recently it has been given. Then Guena Worm Disease. Remember, in the yesterday's lecture, I told you about the zombie deer disease. Now, we have to com complete the new disease, which is Guena Worm Disease. Then recently Bharat Ratan has been awarded and then ISA. You all know about ISA. We will be doing some more important parts. So now let us understand and do the first topic without wasting the time. First is Kentor's giant soft shell turtle. What exactly is this giant soft shell turtles? These are exactly in news because secretive rare turtles are being found in India. That's why this total species was in news. And that's why I'm asking question. So you can be doing this question. Kentor, giant, soft shell, turtle, right? Now let us understand what exactly this is. So this turtle is like motionless. Soft shell is there. It is secretive in nature because most of the time, this species, this turtle is live buried, motionless. Only their eyes are visible. And they come out from the shell twice a day so that they can breathe and they can capture their prey by sit and wait strategy. Like, they can get out of the way, they will attack. That's the situation. Like, sit, wait, and then they will do that. Right? These are carnivorous. They, these fishes, these turtles, they are carnivorous in nature. You remember I told you about the olive ridley turtles? That was also the smallest species of turtles and now there is new, this turtle species, Cantor, giant soft shell turtle. Right? They feed on fish and you will find these in South India, India, Bangladesh, Burma, that means Myanmar. And Thailand. But this only word is wrong because it is not found in these places only. You can found these in Laos also, Cambodia also, China, Vietnam also. Right? So the same here only word is wrong. And if I talk about the IUCN status, so they are not endangered, they are critically endangered. What? Critically. So, for this, only first statement is correct. Rest of the two statements are wrong. I told you why. Getting my point? Why this was in news? You all got that. That this soft shell turtle has recently been seen. That's why it was in news. So, this was the first article. Moving on to the next article. Why I'm asking this? Because recently, Kaji Nemu, this product... Kaji Nemu. This Kaji Nemu, which is the Assamese lemon. What is this? Assamese lemon. Recently, has it has been declared as the state fruit of Assam. Right? It is a lemon species. So, that's why I am asking this question. So, this first statement is totally correct. Kaji Nemu. Right? Then there is a GI tag species of Lakadong turmeric. Lakadong is also a name of a place. Okay? Lakadong is also a turmeric which is from the Meghalaya. So again the second statement is totally correct. Right? First statement was right. Second statement also right. Then 
डोंगारिया कोंड शॉल नाउ दिस स्पीशीज दिस सॉरी डोंगरिया शॉल दिस शॉल यू विल फाइंड इन ओडिशा सो दैट्स हाउ ऑल द थ्री पेयर्स आर करेक्टली मैच्ड राइट लाका डोंग टर्मरिक डोंगारिया कोंड शॉल यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ दीज दीज थिंग्स व्हिच कैन बी इन न्यूज and upsc can ask question from these topics as well right everyone you all know about gi tags geographical indication tag given by the ministry of commerce and industries so these topics were more or less in the news in the recent time and that's why the question you will see the question from here moving on to the third question that is guana worm disease again this guana worm disease was in news and that's how i am asking question from this topic why it was in news rise to global eradication of guana worm disease near finish line some of the nations like south sudan mali where guana worm disease was once very common they have made commendable progress in these and uh, now they are not in the uh, you can say like they have eradicated now so this guana worm disease very much common it is a kind of a nematode disease ranunculus medinicissis so this guana worm disease was in news because recently some of the countries have eradicated right this disease has been from the so many years it is a it is like a, if it is it has been eradicated no then it marks a major win for the public health right this disease was also known as in the ancient times fiery serpent so what is exactly this people develop painful blisters and when they come in contact with the water this adult worm emerges and contaminating water sources and continue the cycle of infection right this disease can cause pain swelling ulcers so that people are very hard to go and live their daily lives and mostly they affect this disease affect the legs of the person and now their success story in india has been there in the late 1990s india has successfully got rid of this guana worm disease right because we have focused upon the simple things like cleaning the water educating the communities about the health and now the african country also is making some efforts in eradicating this so this was actually the question right so this guana this it uh, this guana worm disease which is a crippling and painful infection which is caused by a thread like guana worms right and that's how this was in news and presently it is only in the region of african countries correct statement it is presently in the only some regions of african countries and there presently there is no vaccination no medical breakthrough about this right it is also consi considered as neglected tropical disease and india received this by who in 2000 which is totally correct so that's why all the three statements written are uh, correct you can read about the statements you can learn these because recently it was in news and i will say very very important right you have to remember that this is a neglected tropical disease by the health agency it is spread by drinking water which contains the thread like guana worm larva right it is a parasitic infection it mainly affects the people who are living in rural isolated deprived community and they have to rely upon the ponds for drinking water right and uh, this disease is considered as a zoonotic disease as well right everyone so that's how all the three statements written are totally correct so this was all about the guana worm disease recently it was in very much news and i i would say that you all have to learn this topic very efficiently learn all the names all the things very efficiently moving on to the fourth question recently you all know bharat ratna has been awarded right 
Bharat Patna Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, the highest civilian awards you all know. So that's how this Bharat Ratan was in news. Now let us understand something about the Bharat Ratan. Recently, Bharat Ratan has been given to the personalities MS Swami Nathan, PV Narsimha Rao, Lal Krishna Advani, Karpuri Thakur. To these persons, this has been given. It is the highest civilian award of the Republic of India. Right? It has been established in 1954, around 70 years ago. First, it has been awarded to which personalities? First, it has been awarded to C. Uh, uh, Rajgoparachari, Saropalli Radhakrishnan, C. V. Raman. And recently, it has been awarded to not Pranam Mukherjee, not Deshmukh, not Bhupen Hazarika. Recently, 2024, it has been awarded to Swaminathan, Karpuri Thakul, Lal Krishna Advani, P. V. Darsi Marao, and Chaudhary Charan Singh. Totally 53 persons. But if I talk about the persons who has been received this as a posthumously, the question is being saying, who a personalities has received it posthumously, right? So that's what you have to learn. Okay, you can give this award posthumously. This is possible that this award can be given posthumously. Our former Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri was first awarded this Bharat Ratna Award posthumously. Also, Jay Prakash Narayan, Rajiv Gandhi, Molana Abul Karam Azad, Aruna Asif Ali, Madan Mohan Malviya, they have also been given posthumously. Right? So, Karpuri Thakur recently has been given posthumously. Okay, everyone. So these are the important uh, facts which you have to remember. Like if I talk about Bhupen Hazarika, Danaji Deshmukh and Pranam Mukherjee. All these three leaders has been awarded this Bharat Ratna in 2019. All three at the same time period. Because after this, after this, it is directly been awarded in 2024. Right? So, this is the main important thing which you have to remember. 17 persons are there which has been granted this award posthumously. Right? 17 people. 17 or 20. Like I have to make sure the name. Okay, so if I talk about recently, Nanaji Deshmukh, Bhupen Hazarika has been given posthumously, whereas Pranam Mukherjee, when he was given the award, he was alive. Like, okay, so fourth is totally wrong here. And M.S. Swaminathan also has been given this award posthumously. Right? P.V. Narsimha Rao also posthumously. Chaudhary Charan Singh also posthumously. Only Lal Krishna Advani, he is the politician and former deputy prime minister also. He has been given. He is being not given posthumously. Okay. Moving on to the last question because I am asking this question as an ISA, International Solar Alliance. Why? Because Malta became the 119th country to join the India's International Solar Alliance, right? So I have to tell you some things about the ISA, that is International Solar Alliance. International Solar Alliance, it is the alliance of sunshine countries, the countries which lie in the area of Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn. Cancer and Capricorn. Right. So the primary objective of this alliance is to work for the efficient consumption of solar energy and so that we can reduce the dependence on the fossil fuels. It was first initiated by our Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a speech in 2015 at London, Wembley Stadium. And he denoted these countries as the sunshine countries or Surya Putra countries. Right. 
right they said that countries who do not fall within the tropics can also join the alliance and take up all the benefits but they do not have the power to vote so that's how this country was established in france wembley stadium i told you paris and now it has joined around 119 countries and the official language for this isa would be french and english and the headquarters are located in india gurugram haryana right everyone so let us now see some of the important facts now the question is all member states are eligible to join all member states of un are eligible to join isa so read the statement again all the member states of us are eligible to join isa which is totally correct first statement is totally correct this is very much important right you can uh, like upsc can ask this kind of question so first statement written is totally correct and the second statement is that unga has granted observer status to isa this statement is also correct and that's how you can say both the first statement and second statement are correct and it is a correct explanation of statement number 1 so that's how the answer for the question would be first statement so the answer is 1 and all the statements which i have all the facts i told you about the isa are very much important from the examination point of view so all of you you have to make sure that you are learning these points right so that's how we have completed the five topics for today's class we have uh, like completed the five important things which upsc tends to ask for the upcoming examination so i hope i am clear to you all meet you all in the next lecture with another set of five questions till then take care goodbye thank you jai hind